Hello learners of class 11. Welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners, we have now come to class 11. Let me first of all congratulate you for having cleared the board examination with flying colors and have come to the next level of your learning, in fact left next level of your life. Let me uh, introduce the first lesson in English. Learners of class 11, we have two books for class 11 English. Uh, one is the main textbook, the other one is the supplementary reader. Uh, we will be doing the main textbook lessons in detail uh, for understanding the text, interpreti interpreting the text and the vocabulary, language items, grammar, reading, uh, writing, speaking, listening and the supplementary reader is for reading for pleasure, uh, extensive reading, understanding the overall idea of the text and the extrapolate moving beyond the text. So, learners we know that we, we have come to a serious stage of study that is senior secondary where your subjects are important, but language is also important because language helps you in learning, understanding and applying your science, mathematics, computer science, political science, history and business studies and all other subjects. Today learners, we are doing the first lesson in our textbook, a class 11 textbook, Hornbill, the Kuswan Singh's uh, autobiographical text, the portrait of a lady. Kuswan Singh describes his grandmother very lucidly and her actions, her life and his bond with uh, her and the, the time everything is uh, he describes in a very, very exemplary manner. Let us move on to uh, understand the text first and before we move on to read the text and understand, let me introduce Yukta, a student like you and you learners Yukta and me will do this lesson today. Hello everyone, I am Yukta and I am very honored to be here with Dr. Meghnathan and I hope you are doing fine. So, let us start with the first lesson of class 11, the portrait of a lady. Fine, fine. Okay. Yukta, let me ask you a question. Oh. Uh, do you remember your grandmother? Actually, I do and when I was reading this chapter, I was resembling her with the grandmother of Kushman Singh and I was fine, thinking. Fine. Okay, come on, come on, no, fine, fine, very good. Uh, everybody cherishes, everybody loves uh, the, the time spent with the grandmother yes. and if a young children and the children want to be more with the grandparents than the parents because yes. they pamper, they give a lot of freedom to them and they play with them. So, many, many, many things. So, can you recall? some event with your grandmother or grandfather as a child, some mischief or some good experience, uh, good uh, time with them, come on. Okay, mm. so uh, I used to uh, go with walk mm. with my grandmother mm. on walks and long walks actually and I used to leave her behind as running as a child ahead and then she used to stop and scare me if she had gone somewhere else and I was scared that I am alone. Okay. So, it is kind of she used to play mischiefs with me okay. and she used to entertain me as a child and uh, uh, be with me when my parents were, weren't there. So, it is it was a friendship not a uh, this, grandmother. That is that, that's what, that's what is uh, required, you said the right word, there is some bond between grandchildren and grandparents. Yes. So, that is what you said, you said it is more than just a relationship, it is a kind of friendship. Friendship, Come yes. on learners, this is what we are going to learn, read and appreciate what Kuswan Singh records, recalls his childhood with his grandmother. So, before we move on to uh, understand the story, let us understand, let us learn the objectives of the lesson, let us let us set some objectives. Here are the objectives of this lesson, today's lesson uh, which Yukta will read out to you. Okay. So, learners, the objectives of the lesson are at the end of this interaction, learners will be able to read the text, the portrait of a lady with understanding and interpret ideas. 
then deduce the meaning of words and phrases and use them for purposes. Fine. Then we have got two objectives for you. One is we read and understand the text, interpret the ideas, events and the language used and also we pay special attention. We pay special attention to some of the words and phrases which Kuswan Singh uses to make it effective, interesting and create images in our minds. As you read, you feel. For example, he uses the word, yeah, the grandmother had wrinkles from everywhere to everywhere. You will not forget yes. where it starts and where it ends. So, we have, we also must have felt sometimes we used to, uh, we wanted to touch the wrinkles and see when our uh, grandmother sits near you. Fine. That is what it is very emotional as well as uh, very, very, very normal the feeling of any Indian child or any child for that matter uh, who feel, uh, who feels the uh, warmth and bond of the grandparents. Come on. Yes. Okay, let me, uh, there are three or four stages in the story learners, Yukta. Uh, what he does, first he describes the appearance of the lady, the physical stature of the lady, physical appearance of the lady, yes. how he looks. It is very interesting. He uses uh, some, uh, some words and phrases, some statements that she has been old for 20 years, something yes. like that. We will come to know that. Then the next stage is his bond relationship, friendship with her in the village. Hmm. Then his friendship with her and uh, his relationship with her in the, when they move to the city. Then uh, he goes abroad, then the lady passes away. And the different stages yes. how he spent time with his grandmother. Okay. So, uh, let us now listen to the audio of the text okay. and to describe the lady old lady, the grandmother, Kuswan Singh writes, learners you are supposed to read, uh, here we are playing the audio for you in order to make you uh, read better. So, here is the audio which describes for a minute or so the appearance, the physical stature of the lady. Come on, listen to it. My grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that I had known her. People said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband. But that was hard to believe. My grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose-fitting clothes. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. He did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children. He looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. As for my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. She often told us of the games she used to play as a child. That seemed quite absurd and undignified on her part and we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us. She had always been short and fat and slightly bent. Her face was a crisscross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere. No, we were certain she had always been as we had. Old, so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years. She could never have been pretty, but she was always beautiful. Learners, Yukta, you have listened to the description of uh, the grandmother by Kushwan Singh. Uh, uh, look at the language he uses. Uh, okay. Grandmother had been old for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He had never seen her young. <laughs> then he said he could not believe this lady could have been young once and had uh, children and married. He says that the very thought of this lady being, uh, uh, the very thought of this lady being young is, uh, is revolting. Means he could not tolerate, accept. <laughs> no, no, I could, I can never imagine that this lady was once young. I think it is with every one of us. Yes. We cannot see our grandfather or mother as young and pretty. So, learners and Yukta, here are some strips which describe and depict the portrait of the grandmother. You will have to pick up and arrange them. Learners, uh, Yukta is now uh, arranging the strips uh, to describe the grandmother and Yukta, it is a task for you. Learners, understand that and this is shuffled. You have to pick up, okay. ask the story 
describes the grandmother. Okay. Mm. So, I will arrange them as a description of the grandmother. Let us see. This one goes first. I okay. think. Read out, read out. Kushwan Singh narrates his childhood life with his grandmother, describing her appearance, actions, and life. Okay. Her appearance and actions and life. Fine. Come yes. on. Come on. Then what does he say about her? Okay. Then I think he says his grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman and she had been wrinkled for 20 years. Fine. 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 The wrinkles from everywhere to everywhere. Fine. Yes. You can put it up slightly. Mm. Now, the narrator could not believe that she had been once young and pretty. Fine, yeah. Okay. Had always been short and fat and slightly bent. Fine. So, having described her, uh, the wrinkle, mm -hmm. it, he describes her uh, actual appearance. Come on. Mm. Yes. Uh, the grandmother being young and pretty look makes the narrator's thought revolting. His thoughts revolting. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. So, he could not believe that this lady could have been once uh, <laughs> or had been once young. Fine, okay. fine. Mm. Uh, the portrait picture in the mantelpiece in the drawing room of her with her husband showed her young. Her husband looked 100 years old. Oh. Her, even her husband looked very old. Fine, fine. Okay. Uh, her silver locks were scattered untidily over a pale puckered face and her lips moved in order. Oh, what is it? Silver locks? I think her hairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this, you know, this hers in, 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 in her pre front <laughs> side, the temple we call it, uh, the temple, the forehead. That's what it, it was. And puckered face, you know, he says that he look, he, he describes it, the face which is not very, you know, firm, very lucid, <laughs> loose, that puckered face, yeah, fine. Okay. So, I think I was wrong about the silver locks, yeah. but the narrator felt that she could not have grown older. She stayed at the same age for 20 years. So, so you arrange accordingly there. Yeah. So, this would come before the silver locks. Yes. Then we put it there. And then mm. now I will put the silver locks. Her silver locks were scattered and tidily over her pale puckered face and her lips moved in audible prayer. She always used to pray. You can keep them closer, yeah, upper, yeah. Mm. Okay. She always wore spotless white and hobbled about the house with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other hand telling the beads of her rosary. Fine, fine. Let me tell you. Uh, there are two things, was it? Hobbled about and okay. telling the rosary. There are, these are the kind of uh, new words he uses. Uh, hobbled about, you know that the uh, grandmother, the old people walk not very steady and all, no? they, they find it difficult to walk. That is hobbled, mm -hmm. hobbled about. Yes. And then, and but they room around, uh, uh, they move around the house. The another one is telling the rosary. Telling the rosary. Telling the rosary is what? You know, uh, le let me tell you uh, learners, we all, we use many words like ATM, ma many abbreviations like ATM. What is ATM? ATM. Uh, ATM <laughs> machine, you know, what is yeah, ATM? Yeah. What is ATM learners, you must know. Come on. <laughs> huh? It is automatic telling machine. If okay. you go to a bank, uh, there is a counter called teller. Okay. He never tells. Teller there means counting the money. So, okay. automated Teller machine. That's that's so what that's ATM. That's why he's saying telling uh, so, the beads. Uh, so, uh, telling the beads. You mm. know, you must have seen the uh, 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 old ladies, grandmothers, and some grandfathers counting that yeah. rosary, that that beads. You know, counting uh, the beads. Uh, basically, yes, that, that's what. So telling. So okay. you must understand teller telling. Okay, fine. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now the last one will be the narrator felt that she was beautiful, like the winter landscape in the mountains, an expense of pure white serenity. Okay. Come on, uh, uh, learners, Ayukta, uh, uh, look at it. Uh, the Kushwan Singh, the narrator feels that having described her, she has never been pretty and wrinkled, this, that. He said that she looks so serene, peaceful, calm, yes. and the satisfied, content. Looks like the, uh, the expanse, the huge, vast mountains. Okay. That is what expands. He uses the word expanse. So, yes. not expand, the expanse of the mountain. So, the, the big uh, thing about the grandmother. Okay.
learners uh, let us listen to uh, the second stage of the uh, description of the grandmother and her life. Now, Kuswan Singh says uh, his and the grandmother's bond between the uh, between the bond between him and the grandmother in the village than in the city. Come on, okay. let us listen to the audio in which he describes, then Yukta will arrange the strips the way she did in the first activity to describe the bond between the grandmother and Kuswan Singh. My grandmother and I were good friends. My parents left me with her when they went to live in the city and we were constantly together. She used to wake me up in the morning and get me ready for school. She said her morning prayer in a monotonous sing-song while she bathed and dressed me in the hope that I would listen and get to know it by heart. I listened because I loved her voice but never bothered to learn it. Then she would fetch my wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered with yellow chalk a tiny earthen ink pot and a red pen, tie them all in a bundle and hand it to me. After a breakfast of a thick steel chapati with a little butter and sugar spread on it, we went to school. She carried several steel chapatis with her for the village dogs. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer. While the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda, singing the alphabet or the prayers in a chorus, my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. When we had both finished, we would walk back together. This time, the village dogs would meet us at the temple door. They followed us to our home, growling and fighting with each other for the chapatis we threw to them. Okay. I think in this way, we will be able to see the change yeah. between their bond. So. Okay. So, I will now, arrange them. Arrange them. His bond between, uh, the bond between him and the grandmother in the village. Okay. So, Kushwan Singh grew in his grandmother's home in the village. As his parents lived in the city, he and his grandmother were friends like. Fine. So, it is more than just this one relationship, friendship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, now she used to wake him up in the morning, bath dressed him. He used to recite the morning prayer songs when she would get him ready to school so that he would know it by heart. So, she she would keep on uh, reciting the, the morning prayer song so that uh, he would learn it by heart, put it together. Okay. She went with him to school because the temple was attached to the school. So, every day she also went to the school. Hmm? Fine. Hmm. Okay. After the school, hmm. the grandmother and the narrator would ba walk back home and the dogs would follow them. She fed them with chapatis. So, it would go after uh, this one. She would, she would uh, tell the prayers, sing the prayers so that he would, but he says that he listened to it, is it? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, this one, she used to wake him up in the morning, but dressed him. He used to recite the morning prayer songs when she would get him ready to school so that he would know it by heart. Now, this one, he listened to it because her voice was melodious but never learned the prayer. So, so uh, the, uh, the relationship in the, in the village, uh, the bond between uh, him and her is kind of friendship. Yes. She used to wake him up in, in the morning, bathe him and dress him up and recite prayers. Uh, yeah, recite prayers so that this boy would get to learn by heart it. But he never listened, he said I listened to her voice because <laughs> she was, the voice was melodious but yeah. never learnt a thing. Then she would go with him to the school because the school was attached to a temple or to temple a was attached to a school. Yes. Then when they would walk back home, so casually the lots of dogs because she would feed them with the ch chapatis. steel chapatis. Yes. This is what the bond between them. It is kind of equal even going to school kind of thing. Learners, uh, how a, a young boy and, and the grandmother became very intimate. Uh, yes. um, this the, shows uh, that they used to spend a lot time together, fine, a lot fine. of time together. Learners, thank you very much. Thank you, Yukta.